it says we are live. Greetings, everybody. Is this the moment when I freeze up and can't say anything? <laughs> Not yet. It's, it's, no. you yeah, know, we, it usually we happens music after music the coming. music starts. All right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what the fuck was I going to say? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, shit. So, this is weird. You all saw it. My camera was on. I see you. I know. We but no, the other camera I had was on, and then it, it crashed. Like one. Yeah. 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 Listen, one view of you is bad enough. Right? <laughs> oh, fuck. Now I'm looking up your nose. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everybody. That was uncalled for. No, I'm not. Talk to the hand. (laughs) All right. Yeah, I was hoping to avoid having my laptop camera in the middle of all that, but such is life. All right. Is everybody ready? See. All right. Sticks and bago. We're going to relinquish you. Relinquish you. Relish you. We're going to put you in the background. (laughs) Nobody Thanks for being here. All your support, Jim. Nobody! Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. We're getting ready to make Lobo. Let's get big. <laughs> All right. Here we go. And after uh, Fig, after Lobo, why don't you pick it up and hand it to me, and I'll talk about the book. You got it. All right. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. Yeah. Hang on. One other thing. <sighs> Notes never came up. Sorry. <sighs> Sorry, gents. It's always something. As you can tell, Lobo, this is a very high-class operation. We yeah, got our shit that. together all we the time. All in one bag, baby. <laughs> I think I've got it now. Hey! I do. Oh, Here we go. So. All right. Fine. We're doing it again, like we mean it this time. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. This here is a true story. About crossing the pond at night in the world's smallest cockpit on the tanker through the weather. Oh, and to the uh, tanker crew who uh, did that. Thanks a lot. We really appreciated that. I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. There I was crossing the pond, and you could see that I wasn't exactly fun. Hey, how you doing? So, how does a guy get a call sign like Skittles by hanging out with another guy whose call sign is Rainbow? More questions like that will be answered in the next hour or so. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, welcome everyone. This is uh, so. There I was with Fig and Repeat. I am in Kansas City. Where's my co-host? Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, we home? Shit. <laughs> new lips. First day with the new lips. I'm home today, everybody. Repeat here. And we want to welcome Lobo, who is the author of What's Your Call Sign? Which is the hilarious stories behind a naval aviation tradition. It's about 250 pages that you are going to need to wrap your ribs up before you sit down and read. This this is one of the more outstanding books on naval aviation I've ever laid my eyes on. So, welcome, Lobo. Brilliant book. Brilliant idea, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. That means means a lot to me. Yeah, it is an awesome idea. I mean, you know, it's just around us all the time. Who ever thought to write a book about it? Well, you did. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know how it is. You sit around and eventually call signs come up. You know, and people start telling funny call sign stories. And I, I, for me, I just sort of collected them in my head. And then uh, I never thought about writing a book or anything like that until I was telling um, call sign stories to a bunch of British friends of mine in Afghanistan. And 
one of them made the recommendation that I should collect them and write a book. And that's kind of, it's kind of where the seed was planted. I, I suppose. Damn, that's awesome. I need to do that. Yeah. yeah. What part of yeah. Afghanistan were you standing when, when this took place? I was at HKI. I was in Kabul. Okay. And I, uh, I was way outside. I was not flying at the time. I was an advisor for the, uh, at the, the, uh, Afghan minister of interior. Hey, so just a lot uh, of the dudes on my team are British. Okay. And so, you know, that's, I kind of, adopted some of the british humor but anyway that's kind of where the idea of writing the book came was just talking to these guys and just getting the encouragement hey you should collect these and write a book hey what uh just curiosity for me uh what what year was that when were you there uh, doing that so 17 18 okay yeah i was wow. also there in 14 and i was there in 2010 okay uh well, let's see 2010 i was there uh nine and ten flying out of bagram uh, okay. And then I was I did a couple touch and goes there in f- fourteen uh, because we were flying out of Kuwait at the time. Yeah, um, but it was quite it was quiet there. I and, and I mean it was quiet compared to yeah. twenty uh, to ten and nine. Right. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's get yeah. let's talk a little bit more about this book. Now we've got some some good stories. But uh, what's your call sign? Great book, Fig. Um, do you want to read uh, just that brief quote about well, uh, when I do. one usually gets a call sign? I do, but I, I uh, we got back we got back way up for a second. How okay. uh, so? So Lobo Lobo is a uh, Marine uh, CH forty six. Yeah, let's do the, uh, My apologies, uh, absolutely. Yeah, uniform yeah. Charlie Whiskey Twelve uh, guy. So how did you get into aviation there, Lobo? I mean, I know the story, but tell everybody else. My dad was a A four pilot in the Marine Corps. Uh, so I grew up, you know, drawing airplanes on my tests and, and building airplane models, just obsessed with aviation. Um, you know, shamelessly, I could lip sync to the movie Top Gun. I have no shame in that. <laughs> um, but I, I grew up wanting to be a, I, I'm the only honest uh, helicopter pilot in the Marine Corps that'll say this out loud. But I grew up, I wanted to be a jet guy. I wanted to fly F-18s yeah. and uh, did not have the scores for jets uh, coming out of uh out of, uh, you know, Whiting North. So I got sent to Whiting South. Hey, there's my, my bird. Yeah, that's a... Uh, oh. Look at that beautiful beast. That's sex. That's pure sex right there in the sky. That is a that, beautiful animal. That helicopter right there was the uh, was the catalyst that led to my prayers uh, to please don't don't die. And then uh, and the, uh, in, in my deal with God was I'd never get on a helicopter again after that. And I never have. Yeah. It, was that, <laughs> yeah. it was that one right there. I have, the, I have the same deal, uh, uh, but it involves ospreys. But that's a story. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes. Um, uh, so anyway, I think I'm digressing a little bit, but we had 46s on our flight line that had bullet holes in them from oh, yeah. the Vietnam War. And uh, one one day when I was at the RAG, we pulled a patch off the inside of uh, one of the aircraft. It was a flattened like circle of Budweiser can that they had no. basically putted to the inside of the aircraft and painted over. No. So the frog had a lot of heart. They'd, they'd been around for a long time. That's Field amazing. expedient patch. Yep. Can't beat so it anyway, to death I with got, a sledgehammer. I, I got selected for frogs. I uh, asked for Okinawa because I uh, always liked the idea of living overseas. And so did most of my flying in Japan. Nice. So, nice. Uh, so what was your commissioning source? You were prior enlisted. I was a prior enlisted guy. I was a reservist. Uh, kind of a... Didn't do much in the 90s with myself, just kind of floundered. Uh, and then towards the end of the 90s, got my, got my act together, you know, got serious about school. And so I did that PLC program and then kind of ran, ran with it from there. Was lucky enough to go to TBS with an air contract. So Nice. Yeah. That, that takes the sting out, doesn't it? A little it bit. really does. <laughs> <laughs> so, Absolutely. All right. yeah. Let's see. Uh, Okay, now so, now we now we could talk, now we could talk about it. The, yeah. The, oh, the rest is a wait. UC twelves. You said you flew UC twelve whiskeys. Uh, that was also yes. as a contractor or in the Marines. In the Marines, so I was a okay. station pilot. Uh, oh, by the okay. way, anybody thinking about doing that job, especially in Japan, don't think about it. Just do it. You'll thank me later. It's a fantastic job. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, Five star oh. hotel living, per diem getting, uh, you get to see the world. Sound like uh, a and, sound like an Air Force guy when you said it, that. It's it's just like that. Flight planning <laughs> is about ten minutes. Uh, it's it's not hard. It's pretty easy. It's and it's a great gig, especially if you're transitioning out and you're looking for you go in the airlines. It's a good way to boost up oh, your. 
So well, for, for, up, our, for our non-aviator listeners, uh, Lobo, can you uh, briefly describe what a UC-12 is and what the mission is? So it's a civilian passenger airplane. Uh, it's basically a, a King Air, a B-350 King Air. Beechcraft, um, Beechcraft made by Beechcraft. Be- yeah, made by Beechcraft. It's got leather seats, wood paneling on the inside, uh, it's shiny gray, uh, you know, several tones of gray on the outside with United States Marine Corps emblazoned on the side. Um, and uh, they fly basically high priority cargo and passengers uh, wherever they need to go on short notice. And a Excellent. lot of that, a lot of that is VIPs, you know, generals um, and uh, generals and their wives and boxes of blood that need to get wherever they need to go in a hurry. So, but again, great, great gig because you're flying all over Asia, getting real familiar with flying in like, you know, ICAO. It's, it's great. So, ICAO are, stands for. I highly recommend it. ICAO <laughs> is another acronym. What does that stand for? Isn't that International Civil a- Aviation? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, okay, International Civil yeah. Aviation uh, Organization. Organization. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. the treaties <laughs> that uh, allow yeah. international to not be. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. Look at that beautiful so. beast. That's almost as good as looking as the CH-46. Almost. Almost. Almost that good. Almost uh, that good. <laughs> how, many seat, how many seats was it configured for when it was laid out like that with the, with the leather and everything? Nine seats. So. Okay. But you, you couldn't necessarily always fill the, you know. Fill the nine seats, depending on the weight, you know. Yeah. It's a small airplane, so. But, yeah, I could carry nine people. Okay. Nice. Back to your question. Well, yeah. So, uh, we want to, we're, obviously, the book is about call signs, but it's much more than that. It It's about, much about how the tradition started and that sort of thing as well. Right. But we have always talked about where one gets one's call sign. And sometimes it's right there in the ready room and it sticks. But even if that happens, it's generally uh, made official at a yeah. kangaroo court. We've talked about right. our kangaroo courts here. On, yeah. uh, <laughs> and, our, and our infamous gavel, that yes. thanks yeah. to tail hick, had to be sewn permanently into a helmet bag. Never to be seen again. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Let's just say it was long and flesh colored. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was the gavel. That was the that was the Grand Wizard's gavel. Yeah, yeah. I you know. Up on that. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, we had oh. we had a pretty active. Uh, we had pretty. Well, let's just say we uh, we we had a strong lieutenant corps in that squadron and took the yeah. bull by the horns and ran with it when it came to perpetuating the kangaroo court tradition. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, that was awesome. So, uh, but he writes in in his book about kangaroo court, and I think it's a perfect description, Fig. Do you mind? Uh... Kangaroo courts, rollums, and call sign review boards. For the most part, naval aviators receive their call signs at, a kang- at kangaroo courts. You may have heard of kangaroo courts being used in oppressive countries where the accused are guilty until proven innocent. Well, guess what? Squadron kang- kangaroo courts are similar. First of all... <laughs> All who are accused are called guilty bastards before, during, and after their fair trial. These are very, <laughs> these are various court assignments uh, given to members. Uh, although, I'm sorry, there are various court assignments given to members, and so uh, we, we can talk about that now, but that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. that is an excellent description of a kangaroo court. Yeah. It's <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. The so, yeah, sergeants. Yeah. <laughs> we, should we cover a few of these, uh, uh, you know, yeah. official positions? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think it's different for every squadron, but for us, the uh, the squadron the squadron CO was the King Tiger. Yeah, because we okay. were the Flying Tigers. Uh, and then I think the guest of honor, like sort of untouchable, was the Big Kahuna. That sounds that sounds about right. And then I can't remember the XOs. The XO had a, an official position too, but he was sort of like the. Uh, he was the enforcer for the. Well, he's the, the wasn't sergeant. he sergeant of arms? Sergeant of arms, yeah. Sergeant some, of arms, or what? Or, or if, if you could come up with a, you know, a better synonym yeah. than yes. <laughs> and I only I only did two kangaroo courts in, during my entire career, uh, but in both kangaroo courts, I found that the people that were put put in charge of the defense, they were usually uh, the dumbest, like dullest guy in the squadron. Sure. 
You know, like the, if there was somebody who was uh, bad with public speaking, that was the defense. Of course. And then the uh, the the the, the uh, persecutor or prosecutor was always the smartest, funniest guy in the squadron. So it was kind of everything was kind of you know. Now did not, uh, not in your in, favor if you were a guilty bastard. In your uh, a kangaroo court experience, was there you know heavy fines levied, and then you had to. Uh, you had to pay, uh, you know, just a very small percentage of the fine in the end type thing. Yeah, it was usually that was all usually sorted out as well. Like, because, I, I mean, some guys got fined a lot. I mean, it went into the hundreds. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, so, it, right. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's usually because there's some kind of argument. You know, usually, they're, they're being yeah. argumentative and trying to get out of it. They don't understand, yeah. you know, they're, you're guilty no matter what. This no is happening. What, you don't argue with the person that wins the argument by default. So. That's right. Lay back and enjoy it. Yeah, exactly right. Um, that yeah, that was, that, was, that was the experience at the kangaroo court. And, uh, you know, we all wore our flight suits in different ways. Uh, we, like, we all had to wear our, our flight suits, like, all the way down to our belly button. And then all the captains had to wear gigolo, like uh, – bunch of gold chains and that kind of thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? We had yes. like 262 yen in our pocket. We had our challenge coin. You had to have a white sock on one, you know, foot, blue, you know, a yeah. green sock on the other foot or something. Yeah, nice. And of course, if you were out of uniform, you were fined. You got right? fined for every yeah. little infraction. And then if you had a fine, you know, the worst part was somebody could keep fining you for the same infraction. It's not like there was any rule against that. So if no, you were, no such if thing as double jeopardy not uh, not applying. <laughs> Somebody else could call you out for it, and then you were just, you know, you were going to be in a lot of trouble with your wife when you got home. Kind of yeah, right. yeah. So. And then, uh, so uh, there was a, a prelude to it in the in, in the uh, uh, in the description roles. Uh, let's see, uh, kangaroo courts rollums. So, uh, so yin rolls. Uh, d did you guys do yin rolls? Uh, we didn't do yin rolls, but I will tell you this. So when I I was in Djibouti when I wrote that section of the book. Okay. And uh, the, I was working with some with seals, and uh, one of the, the the JTAC for the seals had been a Blue Angel. Okay. Right? This guy was a freaking beast, incredible dude. Um, he wrote the bit about the uh, the CRG and the and the Rollums. Okay. Because I've never I've never wit I've never witnessed that as a as a forty six pilot. I've never been on a big aircraft carrier and seen. Uh, we didn't do that in the in okay. marine, you know, rotor wing aviation, but uh, yeah. So I got that from uh, my buddy Dickens. Is is his call sign? Great okay. dude. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I can't give you his name though because he's a secret squirrel. So oh, that's okay. There yeah. you go. <laughs> Beautiful stuff. <laughs> oh, I uh, you know, here's the thing about call signs is uh, the the more you hate them. Oh, the more yeah. you hate your call sign, the harder oh, yeah. it's going to stick. I mean, it's like super glue. Right. And uh, so uh, one, one of the things you wrote in the book about that, and, and then I'll, I'll stop reading after that, but it's basically uh, a moniker. So a call sign says you're one of us. More than anything else, call signs are about camaraderie and belonging. Try not to forget that when you read about lamb chop and fungus. So I know fungus is fuck you, new guy, you suck. Yeah. <laughs> What's lamb chop? So lamb chop, chop was a guy that just barely met the anthropomorphic measurements uh, to be a jet guy. He was, he was short. He was a pretty short guy. And apparently he had a, a, a complex about it, a Napoleon complex. A Napoleon complex. <laughs> and he hated it. He did not like being teased about his, his height. And uh, so he got picked on mercilessly for it. And, nice. uh, you know, they would do stuff like they would run the, the pedals all the way forward and the seat all the way down so that when he got into the aircraft, like, <laughs> he could barely see, you know, his head was just barely sticking out. Uh, yes. One time they got the, the tallest crew chief to, like, offer to help give him a boost up to the crew ladder, which he didn't appreciate. And then the, I think that what broke the camel's back on him was somebody uh, put the stickles, uh, stickers no step on the top of his helmet. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was that was enough that was enough to send him over and so the call, call ten he got was uh lamb chop which is little angry man can't handle our uh our program you know which is you know laugh at yourself 
everybody gets a shitty call sign. You know, that's that's the program. And he, he was having a hard time with it. So, lamb chop. I'm writing this down right now because that's a keeper. <laughs> <laughs> Little angry man can't handle. Our oh, program. man. Oh, God. I've can't already handle. got tears. Wait, what was the OP? Can't handle our procedures? Our, uh, our program. Our program. Little oh, angry man God. can't handle our program. Yeah. And here's the dude. I mean, like, yeah, he's offended by it and all that. But he's an F-18 pilot. So, you know. Get over right. yourself, bro, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, what do you, you know, I don't know. <laughs> well, that's that's awesome. Now, listen, you you said fungus. And I, I, I got a Marine buddy. Uh, who works at the same airline I do, and his yeah. uh, his call sign's Fungus because his last name's Moss. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. You know, so that makes complete sense. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, there's yeah. some there's some terrible yeah. call signs out there. Uh, I think the weirdest one is Gizzard. I don't know if you had a chance to read Gizzard. No. Yes, uh, that was. Uh... <laughs> yeah, guy's showing pictures of his sister. <laughs> well. Hold on. So the guy's wait. His dad is a plastic surgeon. Yeah, Uh-oh. And, and he does. Uh, he does. You know. You know. Breast, breast, uh, breast, breast enhancements and things. Reductions. Yeah. One of the things he happens to, you know, he does uh, vaginal rejuvenation operations. Right. What? Yeah. I didn't even know so that was you possible. Put, you put you put five kids through a, a woman's oh. vagina and it tears tears to crap. Yeah. yeah. So, sure. Uh, it makes it sticks less is in the background howling. Her medical vagina. officer. <laughs> Yeah, so she goes and gets a, a you know, a vaginal rejuvenation operation, right? Sure. Well, he, Why not? So he started scrubbing in with his dad when he was about 12 years old. And that whole time he was like taking video and recording it for his dad for scientific purposes, I guess. And so he had all that stuff on his phone and somehow he was looking at, <laughs> he was showing a picture to somebody, like a recent picture that he'd taken for his dad. And you know, like when somebody takes your cell phone and without permission they just start sure yeah well that's when they came across this you know the blue waffle i guess uh, this terrible (laughs) picture a close-up picture of a newly constructed vagina yeah no previous to that oh oh okay yeah before and after shots totally the question like everybody was like why do you have this on your phone and this guy's like what i I take pictures from my dad. I mean, he, he didn't see what the problem was. Uh, yeah, he, yeah, well, he's he's immune to it. You know, he's he's, he's uh, accustomed or not accustomed. He's acclimatized, he's acclimatized so to speak. To it. <laughs> well, anybody, somebody who was uh, you know kind of in the room and walking by was like, "Oh, it looks like turkey gizzards." And so, oh my gosh, gizzard, perfect. Gizzard. <laughs> that awesome. <laughs> and he's a hairier guy, by the way. Not, not much, not much longer. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, that's, that's f- great. That's yeah. outstanding. There was uh, what was the other one you asked me about? Oh, I forget now. Oh, uh, you was I've already done one? crunches. <clears throat> Which bird one? Bath? Oh, bird bath. Um, I think we were going to save that to the end for our. All right, uh, we'll save that one to the yeah. end. That's, that right. one's pretty epic. That one's pretty. Yeah, cool. it's one of my favorites. So, so can I uh, can I make the assumption uh, that when you were you sat down to write this book. Did, had, did you keep a diary or, uh, you know, log book of, you know, your everywhere you went and people you flew with and, and started jotting down stories so, you know, later on in life when you can't remember shit, you could go back and read? Or how'd you, how'd you come up with this, your material for the book? So I, I was, so when I left Afghanistan in, 2000, in 2018, I went to Sasebo, Japan to be the air operations officer on the WASP and then the America. Okay. So for two straight years, I was surrounded by pilots and NFOs from around the fleet, Perfect. helicopter, jet guys, Osprey guys. Um, and then it, it was just a matter of, like, I would sit, at, you know, I would sit in the wardroom across from some dudes, you know, zippers, super suited dudes. And I'd be like, Hey, what's your call sign? And majority of the time disappointed in the call signs because call signs are a lot more difficult. Uh, I think now than they used to be. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. But like, you know, the guy would, you know, whoever it was, somebody would be like, yeah, I know this one guy in my squadron is called some was this. And so I would just, you know, take the basic details down on a napkin, you know, grab my pen out of my flight suit and just kind of check and scratch it onto a napkin and then stuff it down in my, into my jacket, in my, my, I'm sorry, my flight suit, you know, pants pocket. Yeah. And 
at the end of the week, I would take this wad of napkins out and I would just throw it down on the desk and I would start going through it and wordsmith. And if I saw something that had potential, then I would spend a little bit more time on that. And then so we had, over time, did, did, I just collected these call signs. Did you already, uh, you already had the, uh, the, the notion like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to write a book about call signs. B- yeah. Back back then, okay, cool. So you were you were collect you were collecting material at that yeah, point. Yeah, as soon as, for as on- soon as as soon as that idea entered my head, uh, which was when I was in Afghanistan, uh, I started collecting call sign stories. And That's I was just great. at the time I was just putting them on my phone. <clears throat> um, I didn't do a very good job record keeping. Like I I would throw the the napkins away when I was done with them. Um, I still have a bunch of them on my phone, but for the most part, it's just it goes into the book and that's the record. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's pretty cool though. I mean, that's that's I that it's really I I'm envious that you uh that you did that because that's it's genius. And you know, that's kind of how this this uh, podcast that we're on came yeah. about. It, you know, I was uh you know, we yeah. we can all relate to the fact that you know, when you're not hanging around fellow aviators, like a, you know, my wife's uh, I would go to a function with my wife and there's absolutely no no aviators, no, no, nobody involved in aviation there. Right. And eventually, and you know, you don't really uh, like to talk about what you do because it sounds, you know, what do you do? Well, you know, so you, eventually somebody says, well, what do you, you know, what do you do? And you, you start talking and then uh, the next thing you know, you, you got 13 people that are listening to every word you're saying because yeah. you're, you're telling the story. So that's what kind of birth this podcast because everybody's got great stories you know we fly yes. along and, and you know fly along at cruise and start talking to the guy i'm flying with and he starts telling stories and and you know you're at a hotel bar and he's talking flying stories and everybody's got great yeah. flying stories we gotta hell we gotta get these out there so for people to hear mm-hmm. that's how this came about so your, yeah. your book is right along that right right and the way i look at the book is it's sort of my love kind of a love letter to naval aviation and like the culture of naval aviation, you know, like the sense of humor we all have, why we have such a weird kind of quirky sense of humor. I think is, there's some commonalities there. Um, oh, for but, sure. But I, I like, I've always liked the sense of humor of naval aviation. I like the commiseration of, you know, professionals in a job we all love doing, but it comes with a bunch of BS that we have to put up with. And so we all have that kind of common sense of, of you know, suffering and pain and suffering sure. and pain. And, and um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's, it, that's what I tried to do here. Is, and, and then I was just trying to paint a picture that it's not like this anymore. Call signs aren't as freely given now. You know, you have to, it, when you do a kangaroo court, and the, they, they submit the list to the, I think, an 06. Oh, my gosh. And oh, an 06 God. has Make to it stop. It. Yeah. Uh-huh. Isn't that something? And We've the reason is, that. is because, uh, you know, unfortunately, not everybody's been cool about the call sign things. And people have you know, issued some call signs that were, you know, mean spirited, not like mean spirited, like all of them, but like, like really mean spirited, like, you know, racist or, or one was like sexual harassment for this poor dude. And so like that, these came, became national stories. Like the Navy's got a problem with their call signs and, you know, the CNO and, and the air boss are probably just like, God damn it. Right now we got to, now we got to police this. And so now call signs have yeah. to be checked through the door before you can get one. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Because uh, I, I heard you, uh, and you know, it, it changed. Well, you know, we we saw a big change in, during our time frame. It was yeah. post tail hook. You know, we repeat yeah. and I were pre tail hook and then post tail hook, and boy, it got well. That's why our was why we lost our, our squadron call sign. Our, yeah, and our kangaroo court uh, gavel had to get sewn permanently into a helmet suit or a flight helmet bag. So uh, yeah. Nobody could see what it was. <laughs> well, well, yeah. I, and that's why I talk about the tailhook convention in, in that yeah. book, because yeah. it had a huge impact on the culture of naval aviation, you know? And like, I make the point, like there was some, definitely some changes need to be made, but like the, you know, like everything that's reactionary and embarrassing, it just led to kind of a witch hunt. And you had people get in trouble that really hadn't done anything. They were just guilty by association, really. Yeah. Oh, Yeah. Remember, yeah. VMAQ2 but, had the yeah. Playboy Bunny was their squadron logo. Right. And just just the profile of the just Playboy the bunny. bunny. Just the bunny, you know, yep. with the ear. The ear. And they came, so it was VMAQ2, and they came down and said, you've got, I don't know, two hours, four hours to get every logo off of every jet, 
the side of the squadron, everything in the ready room, everything on the office doors, get yeah. it off of there. Then they split the squadron into four instead of VMAQ, Dead Alpha, Bravo, Charlie. They split it into four, and one of the squadrons was the Moon Doggies. We got back from Japan. We'd been the Bulldogs. Our call sign was Dog, you know, Dog Seven, Dog Three, whatever. Yeah. Forever. We got back, and they're like, "It's like who the hell is Lime? Uh, you're yeah. Lime. What do you mean you're Lime? We're <laughs> Lime. Yeah, that's Lime your up. officially VMA two twenty three's official call sign is Lime. L I M E. It's like. But we're dog. Nope. The moon doggies went down and registered it. They stole it right out from under you while you were oh, overseas, you geez. bastards. <laughs> Isn't that so, something? And that, if you go back and listen to our True Lies episode, somewhere around 14 or 16, somewhere in there, yeah. we flew the movie True Lies. And that's why you hear Lime, Lime yeah. 6 cleared hot in the movie. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Yeah. It should have been dog. It's a sad no. state of affairs. Yeah. All because of tail hook. Hey, Chase, uh, Chase, uh, excuse me, Bago brought up a, a good point here. Um, you know, we, we reference tail hook, you know, the tail hook a lot. Um, right. we, uh, we, I don't think we've ever really covered why, uh, why that was a turning point. Should, should we just give a brief, uh, a... let's give it a shot. What the hell? That, well, you know what? You write about it in your book. It's. Falls in your court, Lobo. <laughs> All right, Lobo. Exactly. Good Taylor luck. Asso- you guys know what the Tail Hook Association was. Right. Uh, started in 1956. Uh, all for goodness. You know, get a bunch of Navy and Marine, uh, you know, Tail Hook pilots together. Talk about lessons learned, you know, faster deck cycles, you know, best bomb loads, all that kind of stuff, you know. And it was also a chance for the uh, contractors and vendors to show their wares and what they were developing and for that for Naval Aviation, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. And I think uh, the majority of the people that went to the Taylor Convention over the years, you know, behaved themselves and did what they were supposed to do. But they were always kind of that young, rowdy bunch, you know, the, the young junior officers. And sometimes they would get out of hand. Well, over, over time, they got more and more out of hand um, to where, you know, you had the situation that happened in Las Vegas, which was not great. Uh, um, you know, 80, I think 87 people ended up being sexually assaulted over the course of the weekend, um, all sort of in this one uh, uh, block of rooms that had been set up. And so people definitely needed to get in trouble and, and changes definitely need to be made. Um, but the effect that that had was it changed the culture of naval aviation in ways that probably, I think, didn't need to be changed. Like, I think we still need that O club culture where at the end on a Friday, it's okay to go in your flight suit and hang out and, you know, talk to everybody by their call signs and have a couple of beers and people don't do that anymore. Yeah. It's, Blow off steam. And, yeah. you know, we're in a dangerous business. Plus right. it would, you know, it was a camaraderie building opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And that's, I, I think that's what is sort of, sort of being lost. I don't want to be a Debbie downer with my book or anything, but I think we're losing sight of the camaraderie piece in the military. And I think, you know, that's something that's for me, I think that's a force multiplier. You know, you do anything for the guys, you know? And so I think, I think we need to bring back some of the, some of the, you know, some of the hilarities, you know, some of the, the I'm not talking about the stuff that went on in Las Vegas in 1991, but uh, certainly some of the, you know, the fun, oh, did you do the 31st new? Yeah. Okay. So uh, let me jump in there. So one oh, yeah. of our people watching the live stream put up a question. Says you look familiar. Did you do the thirty first mu in o two o three or o four o five? I was on there at the uh, uh, end of two thousand five. I was on the Essex. Okay. There yeah. you go. Awesome. Right. That was it. I that, see now. There's little questions that pop up. That was yeah. a great description, uh, by the way. So yeah. that was excellent. I was afraid I was going to have to start talking about it, and I was not going to do as anywhere near as good a job as you guys no, did. It, so it ended thanks. badly. I still remember sitting in that little cafe in Iwakuni, Japan, and reading the headline though in Stars and Stripes that four yeah. women were suing the Tailhook Association. Two were assaulted in 1990. Two were assaulted in 1991, and two of the four said they were assaulted both years. <laughs> yeah, I know. So you, wait a yeah. minute. Wait, wait, you weren't wait, sure? Wait, you went was, back? Was, Come was, on. Just to make sure. Yeah. 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 Well, so, yeah. Okay, no, enough about that. Right, yeah. Um, uh, go so ahead, brother. So what I was going to say, there's some great 
the name of the chapters in the book. By the way, I am going to steal your glossary. Appendix B yeah. is basically a glossary of naval aviation terms. I, We've I got a glossary on our site. I know site. I miss some. Nowhere near as good. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I like chapter five. This is the crappiest chapter you'll ever read. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say uh, a lot of call signs are revolving around bodily functions. We've had one talked about in here with uh, Chucker, who talked about shits twice and bolters. Yeah. What? Stab. Stab, shits yeah, twice and bolters. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so did, did you, did you well, shit twice was... and bolter once, or did you shit, bolter, shit, bolter? I, you know, I don't know. We're going to have to go back and ask Chucker. <laughs> I like Brad. How Brad was Brad? awesome. <laughs> Brad. Ba- yeah. <laughs> was the one, there was one that I collected recently, and it's, I don't think I've done justice to it because in my mind it's just so much funnier. Uh, it was, uh, so I can't remember the call sign, but it was something uh, chose, uh Chose to go to the bathroom instead of going to combat. I can't remember the call sign. Uh, but the funny thing about it is the guy thought that he was going to make it back to the boat. Right. And he broke all the rules. He, you know, didn't do the break. He just went straight for the downwind and turned and, you know, they and called for an emergency. And they're like, what's the nature of your emergency? And it was like, it's, it's physiological. And, and uh, at the time, I guess the F-18 was having some issues with the, their oxygen systems. And so they're like, they're asking him like basic questions, like, what color is the sky? You know, how old are you? You know, because they thought maybe he was, you know, having a specific <laughs> Yeah, issue. right. And so he he comes in and he's on short final, holding out hope. And then he's just like, you can cancel the emergency. And he lands, <laughs> lands, and he walks over, you know, taxis over, takes forever to get out of the aircraft. And when he gets out of the aircraft, he's wearing only his boots <laughs> and his flight helmet. <laughs> And he's got everything else in his arms and he <laughs> walks, you know, gets off the aircraft. He walks to the edge of the deck and just, just chucks it into the water. <laughs> Cause he was so mad. Cause he thought he had it. Yeah. He thought he was there. And yes. uh, yeah, that's in yes. the, I, I don't yeah. think I can do that one justice. Cause I, you know, the imagery has got to be, Oh my gosh. You know, this really? guy that is just absolutely. Well, furious. you, uh... You just triggered a memory, and repeat. I don't remember who this was. He was in our squadron, and and uh, it was a flight of four. We were just out doing rake range there at Cherry Point, you know, just yeah. dropping blue bombs. And he's like, uh, "Hey, we got to go. We got to go right now. I got a thing, and and it's an emergency. We got to go." So we all joined up, and and we you know we flew five hundred knots back to the break and let him go first. He got in, and uh, I remember he. He like really was taxiing fast into the line park canopy back, you know, and he jumps out and he starts running and then he stopped and then he walked <laughs> and we all started laughing. We were like, Oh, he didn't make it, man. <laughs> and you can see his shoulders slump forward. And the thing it's, is, it's so public. I mean, oh, there's no, oh, dude, it. right? No, there's no hiding. I mean, that one's, I mean, everybody knows what's going on in that one. <laughs> yeah. How about, how about pitcher Panda? Either one of those are good. Pitcher? Pitch. pitch, pitch. Oh, pitch. So pitch, pitch was. Pin. That's an acronym one. So yeah. that's a guy who, when he got drunk, he would always go to the bathroom in the lady's head. Okay. So pitch stands for pisses in the chick's head. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Dumbass. Yeah. Somehow <laughs> manages to go in the male head when he's not drunk, but when yeah. he's drunk, yeah. it's always confusing. Well, you know, here's how it is. And, and you know, I, uh, I I totally get it. You know, the guy's head's always, you know, there's always more guys than gals. And the guy's head is always, always packed. And then there's nobody in the girl's head because there's not many. So you just go in there, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm I'm just assuming that's that was his modus operandi, but. I mean, or, I'm, or I'm I mean, speaking for a friend. I don't know. I've never done anything like that ever, <laughs> he did, personally. He did it enough that he got noticed for it. So, Panda. Yeah. I got to remember which Panda is because Panda is uh, <clears throat> was a C twelve guy. Yep, that's the one. Ah, oh, I'd have to get back to you. It, uh, so they were in Thailand. Yeah. Like, Do you want me to read it? I can read it. Yeah, go it's ahead. It's a short read one. It, yeah. Right. 
So the Navy and Marine Corps fly airplanes that are primarily used to fly sailors, Marines, and their families to and fro. They also move generals and admirals to important meetings in Thailand and other locales around the world. Among these aircraft is the venerable UC-12 Whiskey, also known as the B-350 King Air in civilian aviation. A C-12 pilot had flown some general to Clark Air Base in the PI Philippines. And that night, he was out having a pretty good time with his co-pilot and crew chief on the on Fields Avenue in Angeles City. There was such a thing as too much of a good time, and this guy's fun meter was definitely pegged. After one too many San Miguel's, the C-12 pilot puked his guts out on the street in several high-velocity bursts. <laughs> Instantly feeling a little more sober, he was ready for round 12. Since he came from the C-130 community, he didn't already have a call sign. A new call sign was bestowed. Panda. Pukes and drinks again. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right. I think you uh, you alluded to this earlier, Lobo. Uh, yeah. Pre-show, I think you were going to lead with this. And, and uh, it, was it CMOS? CMOS. Was the, was, CMOS, was that what you were going to More bodily functions, with? baby. Yeah, CMOS is one of the worst call signs. Of, it's just awful. Uh, so F-18 NFO, they're, they're in Fallon. No, they're in Lemoore. Sorry, like it matters. They're in Lemoore. It's whatever. a desert. It's a desert. It's a desert. And uh, <laughs> they go out and they drink uh, just in case they'll never get a chance to drink again. They were just drinking in... all of it that night. Yeah. And okay. So he came back to his room and apparently lost all control of his senses and his and his uh, his bowels and just absolutely covered his hotel room. Oh, that's with fecal uh, matter everywhere, yeah. including his. You know, blanket sheets, oh, the whole thing, yeah. and uh, you have in here TV, it was TV, the dresser, the TV, the, the dresser. Carpet. I mean, it wasn't a. I mean, they had to call in the you know hazmat when the guy. Checked oh yeah, out. and yeah. Uh, crime anyway, scene cleanup people. Yeah, with, with the with the with the biohazard suits and shit. Yeah. <laughs> like the people that have to do murder scene cleanup. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so anyway, his, his call sign was CMOS, which which was ship sleeps in my own shit spray. <laughs> passed out. Yeah, because yeah, he did it and then C- passed out. And, then and the passed maids out found him, right? So CMOS is pronounced CMOS, but it's, it's uh, yeah. 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 Sleeps that, in that, my own know, shit acronym, spray. There's some acronym call signs that are a bit of a stretch, you know. Yeah. Well, that's okay. That's, 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 oh, that's, that's really good. And then I liked, uh, th- I liked Fig Jam. You know, there's Fig. Okay. Got it. Well, it's a play on a name. But we, we all when know I went Fig Jam. jam. Oh, I like that. All of all of us know somebody that is a Fig Jam, which is, uh, yeah. I have you know, read fuck, that I'm one. good. Just ask me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like, that's what like, like, Yeah, there you go. Like Fig right. Mo- like, you know, when we were at, uh, when we were at the basic school, uh, and I'm sure it probably was the same for you. It, it, all the guys that had the aviation contract, it was Fig Moss, right? Fig Mac. Yeah. Mock Mac. Fuck it. I got my MOS or fuck it. I oh, got my air contract. I got contract. my air contract. And I was yeah. like, hey, man, do you want to be the squad? Do you, do you want to be the platoon commander? Fig Mock, baby. I, you know, yeah. I'm good. I'm good. Give it to somebody who needs nah, it. Nah, give it to somebody who gives a shit. I'm, I'm good. I, give me the yeah. saw. You know, I'll be, I'll be on the OP. I'll yeah. do whatever you tell me to, drill sergeant. Right. <laughs> oh, amazing shit! All oh, right, let's see. Yeah, that was uh, the best advice I got was getting my air, air contract before I went to. Uh, before Amen. I went to GPS. That was primo advice. Okay, yeah. can you, you do you know from heart uh, Yaddo and Wisp? That Wisp and Yaddo, the two flight students yeah. that fell in love yeah. in flight school. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know the I don't know uh, Wisp, and his call sign has changed. Okay, uh, okay. So I'll, so Yato is a is a horn, and I think I'm not sure if it's just the F thirty five has got it, but basically, let's say you're flying in contested airspace, and there's a lot of missiles in the sky. Yeah. And one of them has decided to come towards you. Yeah. Your Yato horn goes off and tells you to do some pilot shit, right? So you got to do that. Okay. And so it literally means you are the one. You are the one. You are the yeah. Chosen Yato. One, right? Yeah. And so, because uh, Annalisa Sots, great all-American uh, aviator, uh, because she was a female and she was the first F-35B 
female pilot. The Marine Corps exploited her for all the propaganda they could get. Of course. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so her call sign became NATO because you are the one. Uh -huh. uh, her husband out of flight school selected F-18s, you know, the lowly F-18, whatever. Right. Yep. And so his, I don't mean that at all. <laughs> so <laughs> his call sign is, uh, is, was WISP, which is wife is superior pilot. And so now he, he is now transitioned to the F-35 and his call sign is now Yanto. <laughs> wait, wait, you're not the one. <laughs> you are not the. You are not the one. <laughs> you are not the one. <laughs> so I mean, the guy, great pilot, no doubt. But you know, yeah, yeah. Hey, his, wife, know, is, his wife is famous, so he's you know just, he's got to deal with that. It just happens sometimes. Yep, that is outstanding. Oh, oh man, Jenna, Jenna. It's it's never a good it's never a good idea to film yourself having sex. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, yeah, no one wants to see that. Not even you. Don't film that. No, <laughs> I don't know why people do it today ever, but they do yeah. it. And uh, the the thing is, the video went viral. It was it was my squadron that actually participated in the the spreading of it. We had just showed up. Uh, our helicopters were flown in on. Uh, it, this was in Iraq. Iraq. Our helicopters flown in like the N-123s, the big Russian cargo planes. Yeah. And so yep. they all had to be built up. And so we were borrowing spaces from a 53 squadron. <clears throat> and then a lot of our crew chiefs knew the crew chiefs from the 53 guys. And so they made fast friends. And so when this video surfaced, it spread over to our squadron. And then it got shared and went, you know, just viral across that Iraq. Oh my so gosh. everybody was <laughs> seeing this video. And uh, the guy that's in the call in this video happened to be an F-18 pilot. Uh, oh, no. And he was in Iraq when this video no. went viral. No. And so his call sign is Jenna after yeah. uh, Jameson. After the, Jenna the Jameson, the, the porn star. That's, yeah. that's, you Which know, is, that's by great. the way, what a great call sign story. <laughs> yeah. I mean, certainly over a couple of beers, you could definitely tell that one. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh hell yeah! Yeah. How do you tell your fiance that? Well, huh? well, hopefully he didn't have. I don't think he had a fiance at the time. No, in the he, future though, you know, at some point he's going to have to tell. At some point he's going to be like, "Yeah, there's this video and yeah, I call oh. Yeah. How about Macho? Oh yeah, you, you, Macho hairier guy. Yes. Macho has a hair guy. <laughs> well, yeah, I I can't. I can't say I can't say it. Um, I can't. I can't. I, I will not get through this. Can you? Can you uh, uh, explain Macho? All right. Just for those that don't know the Marine Corps, uh, sometimes there there's a percentage of male Marines that uh, are very attracted to strippers. No. No. Hold on. Them, a second. Say it ain't wait, so. Wait a second. I and don't. Some think of them it's... marry strippers. Uh, which, you know, sometimes works out and sometimes not so much. And in this case, it was a guy named, it was a Harry pilot. It was in, U in uh, Yuma doing something and he went to platinum as people will sometimes do and met a stripper and they hit it off. And, you know, they, she had a great vinyl collection and everything was great. And they decided to get married and then she became absolutely crazy. And then he found out that she was using meth and that she liked oh, to, yeah. you know, hit him and clawed his eyes, which isn't good for a pilot. So sure. he, uh, yeah. he got, got the marriage very quickly and all and sent her back to Platinum's and his call sign is macho macho. Cause, uh, he married a crazy hoe. Married a <laughs> crazy hoe macho. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. All right. So well said, <laughs> let's, let's step away from some of these awesome call signs for a second. Yeah. And, and focus a little more on Lobo's military flying career. So CH forty six is times two, uh, uh, two, two, two different tours, or, or? Uh, just so just one. Uh, okay. uh, you know, kind of the end of the uh, you know the uh, Frog era, beginning of the Osprey era. Okay. And uh, I did, did you, not. I chose I not gonna, to make the leap. Okay. Well, uh, it's, uh, you made a con you made a conscious choice. To say uh, decision. I you know went off to EWS after I finished my one CH forty six tour. I'm sorry, now, man. That is saying something when a frog pilot says another airplane is dangerous. 
Well, hey, well, hold on a second. I, I can, I can attend. I listen. I'm with Lobo. I, I've said this uh, before. So am I. I'm just saying that's saying something, man. I that's... was standing in formation at Officer Candidate School right there in front of the Potomac River, and there's yeah. a prototype of the uh, of the OV22 doing pattern work, and it crashed right. in the river right in front of us, killed all yes. three people on board. And I said to my, I just said, note to self, that's yeah. that's fucking that's a dangerous killing you know whirling dervish stay away yes. at all costs yeah. i've had yeah. i've had uh three rides in an osprey and the second ride i thought i was gonna die say and say why it, what 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 made you you're you're a you're a 46 guy you're you're I'm used to almost guy. dying every every day what <laughs> every how time you take you, off well, 46 how could guys you? <laughs> don't, we don't like to brown out so when we land we land with some speeds so we can keep the cloud behind us Okay. So okay. that we can maintain visual with this thing called the ground, which yeah, is that's weird. And allows us you... to like not run into other things. Important uh, not to hit that. Yeah. Yeah, and so uh, that's the way we do in the forty six. But apparently, they don't do it that way in the Ospreys. And I'm sure oh. there's an Osprey guy out there, somebody somewhere that's gonna want to kill me for saying this. And like, I know that I'm not an Osprey guy, so I'm speaking out of my ass right now. But this guy lifted up into this hover, and just stayed there in this in this goo for an ordinate amount of time to enough to where you're like, what are we ingesting in the engines right now? Like that amount of time. Oh, and I look across at the crew chief who's sitting across from me and I just go like, bro, what's going on? And he's at <laughs> And so he runs up to the front and next thing I know, I start to see the ground. I'm like, all right, all right. I think we're going to be fine. Oh, and fine. then the ground just rushes up at a, a very uncomfortable rate of speed. And I, well, this is how it dies. This is how it ends. Like oh, I'm about boy. to die. So we hit the ground and we we went right back in the air and we flit, flew right back to Djibouti and landed and that was it. They fried both of the engines. Of course. The crazy thing was is that we had gone out to drop two Marines off at a spot in the desert where there was another broken Osprey that had a similar situation there. And so it was like, I was like, really? We're going to leave two in the desert in the same spot? Wow. So I don't know. Yeah. I could well, be wrong uh, about the Osprey. I, I have limited experience with it, but it hasn't been great. So, man. sorry, guys. Yeah. Uh, how many hours did you end up with in the CH-46 frog? Uh, that's a good question. Um, Just give me close. It doesn't matter. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm I'd not. I'd say I'm not probably gonna... 700, well, close he, to 700. That's good. That's good for one tour. It was, Holy yeah, shit. It was, well, yeah, yeah that, that's about right. Okay. Some death defiance there. Yeah. 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 I never for, crashed for, one. For reals. Okay. Are you sure about that? Because we, <laughs> we've had other helicopter pilots, uh, including our, our friend Sticks, who's in the background here, say, yeah. well, I never really crashed. I mean, I never really yeah. crashed yeah. one. I mean, I had, well, you know, okay, there I ought to rotate You never bent metal? And, oh, no, yeah. I bent metal. <laughs> yeah, I never, I never crashed. So did you really never crash? Every time I landed, I was waiting for the crew chief to tell me that we were on deck because it was so smooth. All I don't right. All right. All right. Well, you and everybody been... that knows me is going like, oh, this must. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's all right. <laughs> that's Lab. all good. Lion ass then... bitch. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you, you did a tour uh, in, the, in the Frog. And then yeah, 2004 did you... to 2008. And, and then, then did uh, you stay in Okinawa and, and do another so I tour? Stayed, I was Okinawa 2004 to 2008. Uh, the last year I was stashed at the MAG. It's a long story. Uh, and then I went straight to EWS at Quantico. And then, Are you saying uh, had, EWS or AWS? E EWS. It's no it, longer AWS. It's it Expeditionary it's War it's Fighting. Expeditionary Warfare School, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, so I went there, and then uh, I hadn't been to Afghanistan yet, but I really wanted to go, so I, I volunteered to go back to uh, Okinawa to go to 5th Anglico. Oh, yeah. And so I did a year and a half of 5th Anglico. Hey! Helmand Province in uh, 2010, which was best seven months of my life. And then... Um, and then came back and started flying UC-12s. I asked if I could get a job there. My buddy was the XO at the station squadron, and he's like, sorry, man, we just don't have any spots. And then a week later, he called me and said a guy had just decided to retire, and so I got I got in. And So uh, you you just you were going to gloss right over this, but we're coming back to this. Anglico, that's, yeah. that's kind of a big deal. So, yeah. um, I, I mean, we know what the acronym in, means. Would you, uh, would you define the acronym for our non-familiar... Uh, Listeners, 
Sure. It's a air naval gunfire liaison company. Uh, and it's, we attach to units that are under the umbrella of Marine Corps fire support, whether it's air or surface fires or naval surface fires. And we provide that subject matter expert to whoever's getting the support, whether in my case, it was with the Brits in Helmand province uh, and others it might be a U.S. Army unit or something along those lines. So you, uh, and it's a fairly small uh, organization. Yes. Pretty small. Yeah. At the time, I think we had three companies to which were reserve. I think, I think that's okay. still the case. Okay. So, yeah. And, yeah. and you got some pretty specialized training, uh, correct? Yeah. So I, I, I mean, not really. I mean, it was just JTAC training, which is pretty specialized. I'll say that. Um, yeah. But you go to uh, San Diego, they teach you all about how to call them uh, naval surface warfare, yeah. uh, you know, naval, naval, war, naval, naval fires, yeah. uh, mortars, yeah. artillery, uh, you know, even using snipers and all the sensors and, and ways to mark targets and how to do nine lines and all that stuff. It's outstanding training. And then you, the culmination is you go out in the desert and you actually get to use it. Now, did, uh, you, cool. did you get jump qualified? I didn't. No. So that's okay. the again. That's the reserve units that get smart the, get man. The jump. Yeah. 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 Our, our, uh, no sense jumping a, out of an airplane that's working just fine. We have, I'm a helicopter uh, guy. We don't even wear parachutes for those things. <laughs> right. I know why. Why would you? It's not going to work. I yeah. mean, you know, <laughs> if you did jump out, the damn thing's going to chop you up as as it's going by you. <laughs> so right. I guess yeah. 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 Well, that's a that's a that was a picture of a warthog in the background with a J. I think that was a JTAC. Was that a picture of you? That wasn't no, picture of you. no, that looked like an Air Force. Let's say that guy's got a bigger, okay. well, much bigger nose than it looks like you. You've got. Yeah. <laughs> so I will well, say pretty... though, if you know any A10 guys, uh, you can say you can tell them that I said I think they're fantastic. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah A10s are the best cast platform there is, and uh, it's just you want to talk about a, a group of pilots that are like totally in support of the guys on the ground. One hundred percent, the A10 guys are. They are. They are all in. Right. And yeah. if if you're listening and you haven't heard last week's show, episode 102 is Warplane, and that's with uh, Hal Sun, who we call him Professor, author of the book Warplane, how the military reformers birthed the A-10, and that was a fun, that was a fun book to read. Yeah, yeah, it, it was fun. Yeah. Thank you, Sticks. Uh, yeah, there, there's the good so, thing. Uh, uh, for whatever reason, now when I went to edit. The last week's show, uh, Sticks just played the sound of the A-10 gun, the cannon, and for whatever reason, it doesn't come through. So <laughs> I couldn't put it in, but yeah. it it sounds like a cross, I don't know, a burp. Yeah. A burp sounds slow compared All to right. the gun, the cannon, but uh, yeah. <laughs> but I, we, love uh, the way, I love that sound that makes, and it makes yeah. it makes two sounds, because you always hear the, the report, and then you hear the echo. Right. So. And then, yeah, I mean, uh, oh, okay. I was, I was going to ask, Sticks had a question earlier, and I just wanted to ask that. It's about this 46. Do you have retreating blade stall issues with the 46? Now, that's a we, we helicopter could, aerodynamics we, question. We could. Uh, if, okay. you got a, if you push the airspeeds up, you know, I think we had 140 knot, 145 knot airspeed limitation. Okay. We usually flew it around 120 knots was the, the norm. Okay. Um, but even at 120, depending on which way the wind was blowing, I mean, you could start to feel like kind of a, like a sagging in the back and you just knew you had to either, you know, yaw it or slow down a little bit. Okay. But, yeah. That wasn't something, I wasn't one of the ones that I really was that afraid of because it's, you just kind of slow down if you, if you get into retreating uh, blade stall, it's not really that big a deal. Yeah. Okay. Well, it wouldn't yeah. snap roll like the, uh, it would just, it would, it would, uh, Tell you first, I guess, is what you're saying. Yeah, you, you'd have that. some serious indications before it yeah. flips you over. Yeah. Okay. And then this, um, that just terrifies me. This whole conversation, I'm really uncomfortable with this conversation. Yeah. Me, as, I, as I, am I, I. I get going too fast, and I got to, and, and this could be a, yeah, uh, that, God, that terrifies me. I'm so yeah. glad I. The speed yeah. is life, unless you're in a helicopter. My palms are sweating right now. Just <laughs> like, I'm going to step out of the, I'm mentally going to step out of this whole conversation. I mean, you guys are not comfortable scarier, with this. so I don't, you know. We had an ejection seat and an amazing jet engine that always worked. True. Always. Yeah, it did always work. <laughs> yeah. Even when it was then, falling. Uh, even when but it was you falling chat, we were chatting uh, last week, and you were telling me about a uh, a malfunction that 
that truly is terrifying with the 46. You talk about that. You, you thought you were getting that and you brought it with your controls. Yeah, lock it, up. Was, it was for some reason I took, a, I'm sure I'm going to get guffalite if anybody hears this. Uh, so I was doing tax support. <laughs> no, don't WTI. worry. No one listens to this. Yeah. Just us. I was doing a tax support at WTI <laughs> and we're flying back. We'd already had a bad day of flying because we knocked over uh, some bags off a table mountain and we had to fly down to the bottom and go get these bags and it took forever and the landing it was a whole thing but anyway on the way back we're flying across the spine of glamis dunes out there in southern california by yuma and all of a sudden i started getting a flickering afcs light uh which you know is not normal and i don't like emergencies that are related to that uh so i, I paid attention to it everything no secondary indications everything was fine and then uh as we just as we passed the, the the dunes, uh, I start to hear this rattling above me, uh, you know, and what's above me in a 46 is the forward transmission. So yeah. I'm starting to think that, you know, maybe the two are somehow linked. Maybe there's something going on with the high, you know, the, the control rods uh, or the hydraulics or something. I didn't know. So I started to, you know, worry about it a little bit. We landed and, yeah. you know, I told the, the maintenance guys about it and they found that somebody had taken the light, the lamp that kind of, you can plug into the overhead panel and the, the snap on broke and they just kind of chucked it over into the thing. And so as we're flying along, it was rattling, it was just up there rattling, you know, at night with a flickering light. Oh, and oh, 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 okay. I missed the at night part. Yeah, that, right. that makes it, it easy. That makes it go yeah, bump it in the night, night yeah. you know, so you're hearing new shit. Everything, yeah. Oh. The night noises are a whole lot different than daytime yeah, noises. Are. It's not the scariest thing that I ever experienced, but it, like, it was, you know, something I mentioned. And so I got, I don't know. I'm still going to get a lot, of, a lot okay. of crap for it. What is the scariest thing that you've uh, encountered then? Because that sounds kind of iffy to me yeah think about that for a second and while you're thinking yeah. about that what is afcs is that automatic flight yeah uh, automatic flight control system okay yeah. okay 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 and then we have two and it, it's kind of a dampener for the controls so it gives you a lot more strength than you have obviously you know how hydraulic controls work and then it kind of yeah. dampens out so that the inputs that you put in are much smoother that's all that's all it does okay um yeah, so the scariest was I was doing what's called a section leader under training flight, a slut flight. And I think it was my my third flight. I was the notional section leader. And uh, we were in Okinawa, and we were in the northern training area. And on the coast of the northern, northern training area, on the west side, there are some very high, very tall, high uh, tension power cables. And All right. So we're flying along. We had just dropped our guys off at this place called LZ-17. Daytime or and, nighttime uh, level. And our, yeah, and, and our other, you know, our wingman was doing the other part of the mission. So our job was we were going to go out to over the ocean, and we were going to rendezvous there before we continue on with the next part of the mission. And the uh, problem was is I forgot to climb to get over the wires. Oh, shit. And so just as we were at the point where these wires were, I heard the crew chief go, wires. And I just, I thought to myself, this is it. it uh, we're definitely going to die right now. And so I, I pulled in as much power as I could, and we climbed and climbed and climbed. And once I knew we were above the wires, I knew that we had somehow either gone under them and then climbed, or we had, uh, you know, flew right at them and climbed and just missed them. But uh, that was definitely a daytime. Was a I know night. it's not that exciting, but it was like, it was. Oh, no. No, it's terrifying. I told the guys, I was like, hey, if you want to go back, if you're done done with this flight, <laughs> I totally understand. And we, we just continued the mission, and that was that was it. So, That's giving me the willies just thinking yeah, about that. It was it was horrifying, yeah. Well, was, was that a daytime or nighttime evolution? That was at nighttime. Was oh, at nighttime. yeah. Of course. That's the best. Of course so, it is. Well, well, the wires are invisible, and uh, you can go right through them at night. Not a problem. Yeah, they don't. If you can't see them, they don't count. They aren't there anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They can't hurt you if you can't see them. Can't hurt you if you can't see them. Oh, yeah. man. So, uh, so if, uh, Sticks also asked, "What was the transition like from uh, single rotor to uh, dual rotor, main rotor, two main rotors?" Super easy, uh, okay. because the frog doesn't have a tail rotor, so you don't have to like put in opposite pedal. You know. It, to pull in power or any of that it's it's really easy to fly 
you can use the pedals, to, especially if you get out of balance a little bit. But for the most part, you don't have to use the pedals uh, when flying. Even even when you turn, you can you can help a little with the pedals, but you don't need the pedals that much when you turn. So, yeah, flying a dual rotor uh, helicopter is so much easier than flying, in my opinion, than flying uh, a, a single yeah. rotor. It actually looks like it. Uh, I wouldn't want to say overpowered, but but with two huge rotors like that, I would imagine that it, uh, it would climb pretty, pretty healthy. It does, but the frog, as I knew it in the time that I knew it, they were all really old. Gotcha. Uh, the engines were all overhauled for the most part. The thing that people don't know about the frog is that the, every frog we flew in the Navy and the Marine Corps was made up until 1964 when we when Boeing handed over the manufacturing rights to Mitsubishi. So all 207s are made by Mitsubishi to this day, and they still make them, and uh, they do stuff overseas with them. Um, but so all of our frogs were all refurbished, you know, some of them taken out of the boneyard, wow. overhauled. I mean, they were all really old, and as such, they were they were un- underpowered. So oh, not, it's, yeah. you know, you're still dealing with two very small engines, uh, they weren't that small, but they were small enough, and they were old, and just they'd kind of been way past their shelf life. So it got to the point during Afghanistan that they couldn't fly with more than the crew chief in the back. Whoa. Yeah. So, so that kind of stopped. defeats the whole purpose of having all those seats back there, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> so, so they so stopped somebody... sending the frogs to, to Afghanistan just because the altitudes there were too extreme for the frog, especially in the heat. Like it did fine yeah. in the wintertime, but it couldn't like handle the, the heat. You know what I mean? So you were, you were flying airplanes, um, um, aircraft, honestly, that were, they were built in the sixties. Yes. Yes. And this is older than me. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So these were 45 years old when you were flying them. Yeah. 40, 45 years old. Yeah. And they had, like you said, bullet hole patches from the Vietnam war. Right. (laughs) Well, they had some character. Yep. Did, in fact, I think you said that pre-show. T- uh, tell them about that, the patch that you found. Oh, yeah. The, the beer can the patch. patch. The, the patch on yeah, the, the patch. helicopter, the skin patch. The beer can patch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was good. That's right. So when I was at the RAG, they were overhauling one of the airframes, and they had pulled off a circular patch that had been put over a bullet hole in Vietnam. And it, all they did was they cut a circle out of a Budweiser can and then puttied it flat onto the inside of this aircraft and painted over it. And I don't know what happened to it, but I'm hoping that somebody has that as a cool souvenir. Cause that is an incredible. Right. Now, it, now hold on. Let's, let's remember this, the, that the aluminum can that that was made out of is much yeah. thicker aluminum that the cans are nowadays. Right. I mean, yeah. remember those cans yeah. were yeah. legit. Yes. <laughs> those, you did. You weren't crushing those on your head. Right. But so you had to like, imagine the, the grip strength to get, to get that hole out. I know, right? That's awesome. I'm guessing yeah. that wasn't a TSO aircraft part, which is an FAA term for, you know, tech specs. And... Probably not. <laughs> well, it was field know, it's, ex- bo- it's, a, it's a Boeing aircraft, so. There you go. Field expedient. It was a field expedient yeah. uh, maintenance <laughs> effort, right. I'm sure. And yeah. they, were pro- they probably didn't have extra aluminum laying around. So, you know, Marines being Marines, they were uh, improvising. Yeah. So And if... It had held all that time, so I'd say it was a pretty good improvisation. I think they should have gone with the Super Frog, in my opinion. You know, just okay. added a refueling probe, giving it a third engine, you know, better engines. Same airframe, I think. Oh, would have instead, been of the, uh, instead of the, instead of the, instead of the Osprey. Got. That's just my mm. opinion, though. Yeah, well. My opinion doesn't mean anything. But um, I will say this. Uh, the, uh, I don't know if you ever read a book. There's Probably not. It's called uh, uh, Bonnie Sue. Uh, might be some people out there read Bonnie Sue. It's a great book, kind of an after action, a collection of after action reports from CH 34 and CH 46 Marine CH 46 crews during the Vietnam war. And they're the most insane thing that you can imagine. Cause you're, oh. you'll be reading like, and it's all in chronological order. You'll be reading about two pilots that got shot down trying to, you know, pull a, a wounded Marine out of the bush. And they had to spend the night in a defensive position with the Marines fighting off the Viet Cong. Right. So the next morning they get pulled out. And then that afternoon you read another action after action, same day, same air crew flying somewhere else. And you're just like that. Right. It's insane. Yeah. Cause we wouldn't have done that in Iraq. I mean, we would have been 
we've been shot down and rescued like we would have been off the flying schedule for at least a month. We we have had the honor the of interviewing. Yeah. Oh, look at that! Of interviewing several of the Marine Corps helicopter. Vietnam guys and they yeah. tell stories just like you're saying they tell stories that you're like what 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 did yeah. you just tell me yeah so yeah. Bonnie Sue by Dennis McKee M C K E E yeah and as far as I can tell it's just a collection right there's not a lot yeah. of wordsmithing to it he just collected him and put him in you know you know chronological but when you read some of them and you're reading the same names over the course yeah. of a week, and you're like, this guy got shot down three times this week. Maybe take a break. Yeah. I don't know. Right? Yeah. <laughs> give, him a, <laughs> give him a week at R&R or something. Just yeah. get, get him because, his, you know, his, his numbers come up three times. Yeah. So like maybe loud. still, you know. Yeah. And was it you was telling me some of the frustration of, uh, uh, for, for lack of a better word, the ROE uh, over there was uh, don't don't get shot down in any way, shape, or form. Avoid being uh, shot big, down at all costs. Big time. Uh, yeah. You know, and I think, you know, it's the nature of the war we were fighting. It just was not, uh, wasn't a conventional war. And like anything right. that we could give the enemy that would be, you know, propagandistic, like a downed air crew, you know, being paraded in front of the cameras, you know, that would be bad. So like the whole thing was, you know, stay above, we had to stay above 1,500 feet when we flew around. Mm-hmm. Um, which is some of us, there was a debate over that because you 1500 feet, you know, you're right there and you know, there's other it's weapons that you have just a diff- of, uh, it's a different fired. ways that you're opening yourself <laughs> yeah, up to. Exactly yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But, but we it, 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 then it made it harder. I mentioned to support some of the troops on the ground. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was great, great flying over there. I mean, I, I remember I, it was all at night. So it was all goggles and like, you just get so good at it. Cause it's all you do. And, uh, so I think I learned more about flying in the, the time that I was in Iraq and I was only there for three months. Uh, so I, I didn't get a lot of time, but, um, it was pretty amazing the the t- time I was there. Cause it's like, like I said, it was flying all the time and nice. long time. It's like eight hours of flying time in a, in a week, in a night. Oh, know? that's a lot. Yes. Yeah, it is an awful long time to you sit just hit, in. Were you, and talk like this when you're trying to go around for. Were you just hitting the hitting the different fobs? Yeah, it's like a bus service is yep. the only way I can describe it. We had a, this knee board, uh, and it had like all the stops we were going to make, how many packs we were picking up, how many packs yep. we were dropping off, how many packs we had, you know, available that we could still carry. Yep. Uh, and you know, a lot of the time we'd fly from one spot to the other, you know, twelve times in a night because they were doing a rip toa. And so we were just moving a bunch of people from one place to the other. So that's kind of what we did. Um, but it was great. It was, it was a lot of fun because uh, you got to uh, fly in a way that you're not used to flying when you're back in the States or in Okinawa. And, and uh, you just get really good at it. And then in the day when you get to fly for the first time after weeks of flying at you know, MVGs and you don't have an MVG on your helmet anymore, it's like you just you feel like you're flying without a helmet because there's no weight up there you know yeah and you've got unlimited field of view all of a sudden and you can see everything this is <laughs> right. amazing i should fly like this more often you know right so yeah i can totally relate yeah Absolutely. wow um so how, how much c12 time did you get did we ask that no yeah no, we didn't. I, I think it uh came out to about just under 500 hours of C, c12 time okay that, somewhere in there i bet that was fun flying around uh it was Southeast flying. I, I was I was not very good at it. I had a hard time with the landings. Uh, I think I was okay with everything else. Hold on, you uh, could land a forty six, but not the twelve. <laughs> yeah, I was I was a little bit hard on the landing gear. I got to be honest with you. Uh, but it's funny, like towards the last six months, I finally learned how to land it. Uh, you know, it was one guy showed me a trick. He's like, "Yeah, just do this," and I was trying to do it the other way the whole time. And uh, so he showed me the trick, and I did it. It's like I I land like this from now on. This is how I do it. So, wouldn't have been uh, nice to know that the first hundred hours would have been swell would have been real swell damn it but nice. i did uh, i did like the experience though because it was like you know i was going to, you know thailand the philippines uh, uh cambodia guam mainland japan south korea all over the place and uh it was like i said we stayed in really nice hotels we yeah. got per diem i went out with my camera i took a ton of pictures um yeah so if anybody wants to do c12 time it's a great it. game. It's just do like it. flying. I think it's 
probably as close as you can get to flying in the airlines uh, in the military, maybe. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. No, yeah. Probably right. Probably right. And Bago's asking, where's the best place you got to go in the C-12? Uh, Favorite place. Favorite place. Favorite, Favorite yeah. place was, I have to say, it was always Thailand. Uh, um, I don't know. That I'm was a, coming. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know. Beach. Thailand beach. Has that tropical yeah, the beach. Island. That's it for the beaches. <laughs> yeah, you get it. I, but no, it's, I know that, that just I love Thailand. I just think Thailand's an amazing, amazing yeah. country. Um, I mean, it's uh, I, it was always an adventure flying there. We always like, we always came away with great travel stories, you know. Um, so yeah, Thailand was definitely my favorite place to fly in the C twelve. Nice. Yeah. Nice. All we'd right. go down there and we'd do. Uh, we'd be down there for weeks because we'd be down there for like Cobra Gold. I'm sure, oh, you yeah. guys have probably done a Cobra Gold in your days. <clears throat> What did we do? Uh, Cope Thunder, I think, was the one that we did. Cope North. Okay. Oh, no, we did. You know, I, yeah, I, I think you're right. Cope Thunder. Cope uh, Thunder was, yeah. The Cope yeah. North was the thing we did down in um, Australia. As a matter of fact, yeah. Yeah, Cope Thunder was, that was around Thailand, right? That was Pacific? I th- yeah. It was, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, or was it Alaska? Or, and, no, I thought that was, I thought that was Korea and Thailand, and it was the whole of Southeast Asia, really. Um Yeah. Big There's a big one that goes so, on, yeah. Yeah, it's getting harder to do now because the yeah. you know the political the tensions, now. world yeah. politics, yada yada yada. All right. Well, I'll tell you what; it's probably time we land this airplane. Um, we can't thank you enough, Lobo, for taking time out of your day to spend time with us. Yeah, and, I, this has been great. Thank how, you so much for having me on. Howling with your book, I'm telling you, people, <laughs> go get this book. You will laugh out loud reading the stories in here. What's your call sign? The hilarious stories behind a, a naval aviation tradition. And it's just much more than the call signs that we touched on, how one gets them, why they're important. Uh, and, and like I say, I'm going to steal your Appendix B with the glossary. Uh, yeah. We're going to get into that. Hey, so, so the guy on the cover of my book is, uh, that's my roommate. Uh, and he's, a, uh, he's an Army captain. I thought that so. was you. Not me. Oh, that's, oh, that's I see. My I see. Yeah. It's, so he's an it's army great guy. patch <laughs> you made up there for the... Yeah. That's, it's yeah. supposed to look like the WTI patch. Yeah. I, I, I didn't make that up. I found that on the internet. I, I tried to find the person that came up with it. Okay. Uh, and I know it's some Marine sergeant out there somewhere that came up with it, but I couldn't. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a great idea for a patch. Yeah. yeah. So instead yeah. of WTI, he's got WTF. <laughs> yeah. Real clever. I mean, it's... So. <laughs> I can't take the credit for that. Yeah. Somebody else did that. So. Really good stuff. So, all right. Well, thank you. Thank you for your service. We really appreciate it. And thank you for yes, this great you for and entertaining great. book. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate yeah, it. It's been fantastic. Do it. Yeah. <clears throat> also, we need to, to thank our tomorrow. veterans, uh, oh, both on. active and uh, retired and former, former active, and the families who did so much sacrificing in the name of uh, freedom for our country. We really, really appreciate that. Any other did thank you, yous out there, Fig? Did you have something else to add, uh, Lobo? Because oh. you, you might have got blocked. Right. No, I was there. just going to say, I, I really enjoyed the, the show, so I'm looking forward to diving into all the episodes. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Well, uh, you know, in, in, in like we tell all of our guests, you're, you will probably think of five stories you wish you would have told uh, after we stop. So just yeah. write, write the bullets down. And, okay. And, you know, we can reattack at, a, at another time. Yeah, that's Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> we got to say thank you to Dave Hamilton and Backbeat Media, baby. Look at that. Backbeatmedia.com. He, that's actually uh, where we get our, our bandwidth for this, correct? Yeah, bandwidth uh, that comes through uh, Cashfly, uh, which Dave has a relationship with. And uh, Backbeat Media handles all our advertising. So we really appreciate that. We couldn't bring all these shows to, I think we cracked 6,000 listeners last week, Vic. Hey, that's fantastic. So, yeah. So we're growing like crazy. Please share the show. Keep sharing the show so we can crack 7,000. We, we're uh, having a ball bringing this to you. So We added maybe a couple uh, acronyms to this uh, episode. Absolutely. And we didn't uh, do a good job to define them for you let us know we have a glossary that has most of our acronyms and i guess we're going to add a bunch more (laughs) (laughs) to our (laughs) to our uh, glossary so yeah yeah, let us know so there was that us slash glossary 
Got we it. Had... We'll, we'll talk later. I got lots of pictures I can share with you guys. Oh, man, Perfect. that's fantastic. Perfect. We Bye. had an anonymous donor uh, that reached out to us. And Indeed. we want to say Indeed. thank you. Yeah. Very humbling. Very. You know humbling. who you are. Uh, we He was at least able, we were able to communicate with him, but he's remaining non anonymous for re, uh, an important reason. But he uh, he put $500 in our uh, fuel tank. So we are humbled and grateful. And I think we'll spend some time here in the very near future and go back over all our donors again, because everybody that spends their hard-earned money uh, on us, we, we can't thank you enough. It's just, it's humbling. And thank you doesn't seem like enough of a, of a way to do it. I know. It, comes, it always yeah. comes short. It seems short. Yeah. We got a couple people helping to produce the show. We got Bago back Bago. there in the in the nether regions of our podcast, where yeah. he's I can bear, he's fo kind of fogged out, but I can see his <laughs> handsome face, and of course the brains of the operation sticks. Thank you, sticks and Bago. You guys Indeed. rock. Thanks, Thank guys. you for all you do. Thank you to. Uh, BDS Aviation Photography, Brad Silcott. I got a new call sign for Brad because as I started to put it in there as a notes to uh, thank him, I accidentally typed badass. So <laughs> thanks, badass. <laughs> <laughs> All right. BDS Brad, Aviation badass Silcott. I yeah. like it. Badass. badass Aviation Photography. <laughs> I love it. Really good stuff. Did you guys hear what uh, Chris Frey said? No. Wait, oh, oh, there already frog, frog pilots defy death more than Harrier pilots. Well, that's probably a fact. That's that's <laughs> that's more than a fact. I mean, right. every time you go up, every, every time go single up. time you're defying death. Yeah, man, just starting the engine of that thing is dangerous. <laughs> It'll beat you to death. <laughs> right. So yeah, and then I, my hearing's a little bad, but I think I hear something in the background. Oh, in the band. buddy, that is. That is the two F-16 pilots that make the Air Force sound great. That is they the do Dos Gringos. Gringos. Yeah. Count them. Count them. They got no four dos. albums, and not one of them has a sad song. They are all <laughs> awesome. And they will make you, well, it's like doing, hey, if you don't want to do a thousand crunches, listen to some Dos Gringos songs. Right. Yeah. Because they're awesome. They'll make you laugh. So we need to send this book to Snooze over at the Dos Gringos. I bet he'll get a couple more songs out of this oh, book. Oh, hell to the, yeah. <laughs> so, hey, shouldn't it be right. about time for them to be doing a live show at uh, uh, out in Arizona? Yeah. This was about this so. time last year, wasn't it? Yeah. Are they Actually, still in? October. No, they're no, not in. No. They're, both, they're both retired, but uh, they do get together and play now and then. So. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Right. yeah. So Repeat went. I, I'm yeah. going next. I, I, I really... I wish I could have been there. Yeah. Got to make that so. But, all right. Well, I think in honor of this week, we say until next week. Yep. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Don't sit don't, on the collective. Don't sit on the collective. <laughs> don't Lobo. sit on the collective. Don't sit on the collective. Yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. All right. I'll see you guys. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Well, there I was. Crossing the pond and you could see that I wasn't exactly fun Of all the shit I was wearing on that day Now an F-16 is cramped enough But it's even worse with all that stuff Supposed to save your life But we knew there was no way Cause when you're going down the North Atlantic, man, it's over What'd you say? He says it's over I blame society. <laughs> all right. And we are out. Okay. Okay. All right. Hold so, on. all right, everyone. Uh, I know Lobo's got to get going, so we're going to cut this off here pretty quickly, and uh, we're going to do a quick uh, re-attack for those of us, uh, for those of you who are uh, Patreon and donation supporters. We're going to get you some extra content here. So if you want to hear specific content that nobody else gets to hear, go to sodarawas.us slash patreon or to our website so there was dot us slash donate and you too can find a way to get onto this con get onto this content uh but in the meantime
Thank you, everybody, for joining us, and we will chat with you again soon next week. Take care. Peace.